Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Tuesday live stream. So this is uh, the second day of the week of uh, pretty much really good news. And I, and I think I understand what you may be pondering. And you're probably thinking to yourself, did I miss out? And just like the thumbnail and title suggest, no, no, you did not. So what we're going to take a look at today is, of course, a little price action in the beginning. I'm going to go back to my roots and talk about uh, the market because everybody seems to seems to love that, and myself included. I like to see these green days because everybody's happy. It's fantastic. It's like uh, it's like living in Texas when uh, the Dallas Cowboys win. I'm not a big Cowboys fan, but when everybody wins, I'm like, hey, this is good news. And this is a win for us today. Look, Bitcoin's over 57K. Ethereum's at 3200 BNB's, I mean, almost $400, but it's a uh, seven day at 13% and on and on we go. And of course, these prices are crazy, right? They're, they're insane. How does this go up so fast? And how can we have a market cap of uh, $2.2 trillion on, the, on our way to 2.3? And is this it? No, this isn't it. And I actually put this out this morning. And I said, right now, you are probably thinking to yourself, did I miss the boat? Is this it? Because, you know, with these kind of price action, I mean, how the heck could we ever, you know, go from here? Is this maybe this is the top? It's the same thinking in the bear market. In the bear market, nothing will ever turn around and it's the worst thing of all time and it's just awful. And nothing will actually appreciate because the market sucks. And then when everything goes sideways, everybody's like, ah, this will be the same thing for the next 20 years. It's just going to be sideways and it's going to be brutal and we're just going to stick around and that's it. And then when we get to the, when the bull market, we're like, this is fantastic. Everything's going up, but maybe this is the top. I'm really worried. It's not. It's not. But I, I, I did put this out and I had a lot of responses. You know, I said, like, I said, look, relax, relax. You did the best you possibly could, right? All the things that you bought along the way when everybody was laughing at you and your friends were like, why are you doing this? And maybe your significant other was like, hey, I noticed the bank account. This uh, went to Coinbase and maybe this a little bit went to this exchange. Why'd you do that? I thought we talked about this. You have a problem. And then before you know it, you're like, OK, who's got the problem now? See these uh, price appreciations of what's going on and everything is looking pretty good. So everybody's happy. But then you think to yourself, could I have done more? No, you couldn't have done more. You did everything that you were supposed to do. You front ran the largest institution in the entire planet, BlackRock, with their 10 trillion assets under management or whatever else it is. So just, just kick back and like, yeah, I did what I was supposed to do. I did my job. It wasn't easy. And I'm pretty happy like that. So just get used to this feeling. It's going to be a little bit bumpy. Nothing goes in a straight line. And just get ready to be accommodating to all the friends who are laughing at you, who will now be calling you asking for <laughs> financial advice. <laughs> Unbelievable. But here's the proof I was talking about. We're, we're nowhere near where we should be. We're just in the beginning stages, quite honestly. And I know people have been saying, like, I'm stopping dollar cost averaging. I'm not going to buy anything else because what's the point? This is it. Eh, not so much. So there's a couple things I want to show you. First of all, this is uh, this is Ben's. We all know this is Ben's site into the cryptoverse, right? And what I want to show you is this is a social metric risk, which is YouTube views. And I want to show you, I don't really like doing this, but it has to be done. The views at Digital Asset News. And actually, my, my YouTube channel started all the way back. Actually, it was, it was November 2019, but I had so few views, no one really, it, it doesn't even register <laughs> on this site. But just look at this. And we can see that the views uh, around February 2020, which if we look at the four-year cycles, right, that was the halving year, just like 2024 is a halving year. That's about right now. And I had 28,000 views. And of course, time has changed, you know. But then, and then of course, it really went down here in March and the uh, Cerveza sickness and everything cratered off. But then after the halving, my views went up like crazy just like crazy because the narrative was there. I know people don't believe in the, some people don't believe in the four year cycles, the narrative of, you know, the Bitcoin having, but it's real and it's true. And it happens. <clears throat> the having was May 11th, 2020. My views from there went from roughly 29. It tripled to 90. And then of course we had some sideways action. Things went up and I took little breaks here and there. But then as we got up to here, views started to really skyrocket and they they really topped out per day i was getting over a hundred thousand views 
in 2021. That's February, and then March, and a little bit of April, then May, and so on and so forth. And then right now, where are we? Pretty much the same thing as we've been before. Actually, I'm losing views a little bit. Now, let's take that and take a look at Coin Bureau and overlay that. Oh, this isn't good. Coin Bureau crushes everybody, pretty much. And uh, you can see that the metrics itself, I mean, like, did you know at one point me and Guy started out the same time frame? Look at that. We had the same amount of views. What the heck happened? Well, likability, probably. And uh, just doing a much better job <laughs> of research than what I did. And we can see again that, of course, like, as far as like price action and the views, we can see that it was uh, quite a different story. I mean, his went way higher. But then what happened? Now look where he's at right over here. So like if we're taking a look at the social metric risk, I don't think we've really gone anywhere. And then there's another one that I really wanted to, to take a peek at, which I think is, will hit home with more people. And that's just the general terms, which is Google. There's a website, trends.google.com, links in the description. And you can take a look at the interest for Bitcoin over time. And what I wanted to show you is that, now this isn't gonna show you uh, the search the search volume of the term Bitcoin. What it's showing you is the amount of interest over a continuum of time where 100 is, is the top and zero is absolutely no interest. Bitcoin in this nice continuum over a year actually topped in the beginning of January because of obviously the ETFs, right? But guess where we're at right now? We are here. We're half of the interest than what we had before. People don't realize what's going on. I mean, they heard about an ETF and they were happy, like, oh, that's cute. But they pretty much were like, eh, whatever. And they did something else, right? Because the interest over time is, according to Google, is quite low. Now let's take a look over the last five years, which would include the last cycle. And if we take a look at that, the interest, again, well, because we've actually elongated that, the interest right now is very low, 23 and the interest that we had an all-time high for those ETFs, which you think would be much higher, was only like a 40, 36, somewhere around there. And if we come over here, we can see that in all honesty, we topped out four years, well, three years ago in 2021. And we had a lot more interest and a lot more people here than over that. So what does that mean for you? Really what it means for you is this is that I know when people will look at this and they'll look at the price action, they'll say to themselves, well, this is it because you know why would I invest anything more into it? And I can't give you financial advice to tell you what to do. I can just tell you what I'm doing. Just like it was the last time, in the last cycle, I remember the same thing being said. I remember the same thing being said, which was, this is pretty much it. You know, We're gonna go sideways for a bit and then we'll, we'll catch a little bit of peace and we'll go up. But if you didn't get in, you know, a year ago, then you're screwed. And then that's it. And I remember thinking to myself, well, I mean, maybe it is. I'll just keep dollar cost averaging. So I was dollar cost averaging there. I'm going to dollar cost average here. I still think we have a little bit of room to grow. And it actually worked out. So again, if you think you missed out, I don't think you did. Let me know what you think about that in the comments section. And then there's also something interesting, which is uh, grayscale is slowing down. Uh, this is my favorite chart that I try not to screw up every time. BitMEX research, and this is in dollars. I learned that a couple of days ago. But uh, it's just interesting to note that uh, we were just at 5 billion something, like five and a half billion. Now we're at 6 billion, the total spot ETF. And what I want you to notice is that this column on the far right, the grayscale column, today is the lowest outflows grayscale has had in the entire time of when the spot ETF started. And we thought, you know, like, well, in the very beginning, 95, 95 million would be a lot, but uh, that wasn't the case. I think their highest point was around 500, yeah, almost 600 million in one day outflows, which is the third day or the third trading day of the ETF. And as of yesterday, 26th of February, it was the lowest day. So it seems like they're running out of steam. If you take a look here, it went, I mean, there was a big jump here, 200. But then it went on Thursday to 55, on Friday to 44, 
And just yesterday, only 22 million. And we can scroll over here to see who are the big players. Well, BlackRock in the first section here is 111 million, but look at Fidelity, 243 million, which again, gives us a nice, <laughs> a half a billion dollars in one day. Is that the most? Wow. That's actually the second largest day of inflows since the very beginning of the trade, which is 11th of January, 2024. And remember, I think people were, were calling for that, uh, you know, it wasn't going to really pick up like that, but here we are. I still personally think that people are behind the times and waiting to get in. Could be wrong. We'll see. But that also leads me to MicroStrategy. Uh, just on, uh, on the 25th, what was that? This as a Sunday. It's kind of weird. Well, not really. MicroStrategy has acquired an additional 3,000 Bitcoin for $155 million and an average price of 51000 as of February 25th. Today is the 27th, right? 27th, 26th. 27th. That's what's great about Sailor picking up Bitcoin. He doesn't have to wait for the ETFs to open up. It's not traditional finance. He just goes to the exchanges, goes right to Coinbase, picks up whenever he wants to, sells whenever he wants to, which he hasn't sold you know, anything now, but can do whatever he wants to anywhere over time. And that's the power and beauty of a exchange and not waiting for traditional finance. So that's happening right now. And it got me to think about this. Did you know that every day there's 900 Bitcoin that's being mined? That's it, 900 Bitcoin. So right now you got Michael Saylor swallowing up 3,000 Bitcoin. You got the ETF swallowing up Bitcoin. You got us doing our little minnow games of dollar cost averaging, buying things up. I think this is... Uh, a really great time actually to be in in crypto and digital assets and Bitcoin more specifically. But I also thought about this. If Bitcoin is doing this and Bitcoin is a proxy for MicroStrategy stock, how are they doing as far as with uh, their stock? And then I thought to myself, because they're growing so fast, how far away are they from being included in the S&P 500? Think about that. MicroStrategy, S&P 500. Check this out. The S&P 500, to become part of the index, a stock must meet the criteria, including having a market cap of 14 and a half billion or more. Other key requirements must have a primary listing and be subject to US security laws. That's That will be MicroStrategy because they are a publicly traded company. And uh, guess what? <laughs> They're worth 14.7 billion. So, I don't know if they're already listed on the S&P 500, correct me in the comments section, but uh, how great would that be if MicroStrategy muscles its way into the S&P 500 and is there and becomes a contributing factor for the increase of the valuation of the S&P? And they can point to one and one thing only, because let's be honest, it's not like MicroStrategy stock skyrocketed because it did some fantastic new thing in its company. The fantastic new thing was investing into Bitcoin. Not to take anything with Michael Saylor and what his business does. I don't know if they would have hit $14.7 billion without being a proxy for Bitcoin. So that is good news. And again, one more thing to look positive on it. And uh, to finish this up with this moon boy session that I keep to, seems like I'm going into. I'm sorry. There's just, once you get to, on a good day, sometimes you just got to kind of, kind of roll with it. But I'm sure there's some some bad news on the horizon. Trust me, nothing goes up forever. But uh, this is from Crypto T. And I found it interesting because I'm always saying how, you know, these, these cycles, they are essentially the same thing over and over again. But she made a good point. And she states, uh, and you can follow her at Crypto T on X. She states, this cycle is different because the Bitcoin ETF people can't swap to altcoins. And I thought about that. And I said, yeah, she is absolutely right. I mean, they people can swap to altcoins from an ETF. It's a heck of a lot more difficult, especially if they're TradFi people and they probably hear the same stuff from everybody else, which, <laughs> and the same thing for me too, which is, you know, 99% of crypto is a, is a scam and worthless. Even I say that. So they probably will look at this and go, maybe I'll just hold on to Bitcoin because it's going to be great. But it is a good point. And then it really comes to think about, well, what about altcoin season? I don't think we even touched on that yet, uh, but we'll see. But it's something to ponder, something to think about. I still think the altcoins can run, but uh, 
who knows how much it could be as things are being trapped into the Bitcoin ETF. Anyhow, let me just think about that. And then to finish this up, uh, there was an article or a piece from CoinGecko. I know people like to talk about airdrops. I do myself. Who doesn't like free money? But uh, this little piece, if you're into airdrops or if these come, it was a it was a good retrospective analysis. But take a look at when to sell your airdrops. And what they found out was that 50% of the time, if you sell within two weeks, that's the best time. Other than that, you kind of get screwed. So it says here, when's the best time to sell airdrops? Airdrops to be the best to be within 14 days. And here's some data. Airdrops taking their tokens that reach their highest price returns in the short term include uh, Ethereum name service went up 73% by day two. And you'll notice something about this. The, the numbers date the second day, 73% by day two. And that's, I think, like a lot of listings, especially on DEXs. When you get into DEXs and start to look at listings, it seems like they'll they'll go they'll go straight scary crazy in the first couple of uh, hours, 24, maybe 48, but then you'll always, not always, but most of the time, see them drop off. But same thing happened with ENS, X2Y2 did 121% by day two, blur, 90% in six days, looks rare, almost 200% in day 10, and then Arbdoge, whatever the heck that is, did 4X by two weeks. And then uh, other ones include uh, Gito, which would be the Solana Dex, did 43% in, by day two, when, Another meme coin, essentially airdrop on Solana, did 37% by day three, 75% by day 10 for Dimension, blah, 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 all this stuff. But then it breaks it down that uh, day of the airdrop, within seven days, you have stuff like this. No, excuse me. The day of the airdrop, we have stuff like ICP, whatever the heck that is. Day two to seven, I don't, except for Gito, I don't know what that is. I don't know what these are, eight to 14. Okay. This is where it gets interesting. 15 to day 100, you got ApeCoin. I can see that. Pith, which is uh, the Oracle and Solana. I think this is the graph, if I'm not mistaken. Correct me in the comments and then X. But then look at these ones right here. Osmosis, Optimism, One Inch, Celestia, Bonk, Arbitrum, Uniswap. Those are long-term plays day 101 onwards so again you can make some pretty good gains in the short term but i don't know how much that is trash but some of these are actually good and actually will do things but you have to hold on to them for a while but if you're just here for a for a short quick dip this would be the way to go and then also as far as alts um of course on our second channel dan degen we just talked about uh, a project called alvara which essentially is a DeFi hedge fund and I thought it would do pretty well. I didn't know it was going to do this well, but it sold out in under four minutes. Yeah. So that was the IDO. Looks like it'll be on Uniswap on the 4th of March. And I just wanted to tell everybody that uh, be careful with this one because, like I just said, because the initial listing, which will be 4th of March, it's a fair launch. Remember that these DEXs, when they start, they start off hot and heavy, but then people get dumped on like crazy. So... Just being honest, that's usually what happens. So be careful. And that will conclude it for those pieces. Now we'll jump into a little Q&A. Oh, also one more thing. I'd like to welcome a new sponsor to the show, uh, which would be Harry's Razors. Harry's Razors. I know people will think that's an odd, that's an odd thing. Why would, why would Rob have uh, Harry's Razors as a, a sponsor of the show? It's very easy because it's safe, everybody needs razors, and it's only eight bucks, you get a razor and a gel, and you can start that right now. There's a link in the description, you can check it out. And I think it's a little bit safer than, uh, you know, having like uh, affiliates for like, oh, I don't know, like some crazy exchange out there, or some crazy other crypto market type of thing that could be a rug pull. So I'll stick with the razors. Anyhow, if you wanna check that out, it's only eight bucks. They work pretty well, and uh, that's it. And yeah, yeah, even though I got a beard, still got a trim up here. And that's it for today, so look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive.